Hello, it's John Heaton, and uh, today I'm going to review this famous album from Neil Young, Rust Never Sleeps, from 1979. And uh, the reason I'm reviewing it is because I finally picked it up on vinyl. Uh, I didn't own it on vinyl previously, and I, I couldn't find a second-hand version, so this is the, the new one. And I was just happened to be in Florence last week, and... Uh, Checked out a couple of record shops, which I would recommend if you ever happen to be in Florence, Italy. Um, the one I bought this album in is called is called Rock Bottom Records, in the town center somewhere, one on the, one of the little side streets. Um, very good shop, very good range of material, and uh, impressive. Um, so this is my new copy, um, which has the lyrical insert and. Uh, what I presume is the original inner sleeve, and it's on nice 180 gram vinyl on the famous Reprise label. And uh, just before I review the album, I'm going to show you a couple of other Neil Young albums I picked up recently, second-hand ones, not, uh, not new, uh, which I thought might be of interest. I picked up Tonight's the Night new, in the same record shop back in September, um, and I will review that album soon. Uh, but in, in another record shop in Florence, I picked up this German copy of Zuma, which is in great condition. And uh, it's got the original uh, lyric sheet. Uh, and then about a year ago, I guess, picked up this German pressing of On the Beach. From Neil Young. Uh, not in quite as good condition as the Zuma one there, but uh, with the original insert and everything, so that was nice. By the way, the second record shop in Florence is called Move On, and uh, it was a tremendous experience because it's a pub on the ground floor, and then upstairs there's a record store. And uh, it's a little bit dangerous because if you've had a few drinks, then one is tempted to go and spend a lot of money. So I did the record shopping first and then went and had a few drinks and managed to resist the temptation to go back upstairs. So, nice shop, um, nice people who run it, and they give you this really nice bag when you buy a record, which is good. And then uh, the glass I was drinking out of, I said, could I buy, a, buy one? And they said, yeah, sure. I thought they might give it to me, but they didn't. I had to pay for it, but it wasn't too expensive, so that was good. Move on, the shop is called. Not sure if it's named after the ABBA track, but uh, that was that. So, back to the album. So this is a tour de force album. I mean, I'm not sure if it's my very favourite Neil Young album, but if it's not, it's in my top three pretty, pre for sure, I think, along with probably Tonight's the Night and Comes a Time. So that I think the 70s period is his peak period. And I think this album is remarkable because it combines an acoustic side with an electric side. So the acoustic side is uh, supported by Nicolette Larson and um, Joe Osborne, Carl Himmel. Most of this stuff is recorded live, by the way, and then maybe they overdubbed some stuff in the studio. And then on the, on the second side of the record, You've got uh, Crazy Horse, who are not credited by name here, but uh, most of us are familiar with the names Billy Tolbert, Ralph Molina, and Frank San Pedro had joined Crazy Horse by this stage. Um, former members such as Danny Witten had, of course, passed away by this stage. So this album begins with a great track called Hey Hey. Sorry, my my oh my, <laughs> my my hey hey, opens the album, and then a, a similar version, hey hey my my into the black, uh, finishes the album. So, uh, which contains the famous line, "It's better to burn out than it is to fade away," uh, which has attracted attracted quite a lot of controversy over the years. Uh, Kurt Cobain quoted it, I think, in his suicide note or referred to it, I think it was in the suicide note, um, which caused Neil Young quite a bit of uh, heartache 
um, wouldn't say guilt because he's not if you read the lyrics he's not actually saying well he does mention in that line it's better to burn out than it is to fade away but I think he's meaning artistically rather than a lifestyle choice um, meaning he thinks an artist should keep reinventing himself try something new rather than rest on his laurels and I think that's a perfectly valid argument and there is a line in the song which actually says it's out of the blue and into the black they give you this but you pay for that and once you're gone you can never come back when you're out of the blue and into the black so maybe Kurt should have listened to that line um, because as I say I don't think it's fair to to blame Neil uh, for encouraging that you know, any kind of suicidal tendencies um, it's obviously a personal choice at the end of the day and uh, this is just a song and, and as I've already said, I think the message in the song is artist, artistic uh, renaissance continued, trying to you know, push the boundaries, a bit like uh, other artists have done over the years, such as David Bowie in his great period and stuff. So uh, that's that. By the way, Neil, um, John Lennon was asked about that line in these Playboy interviews, and uh, David Sheff, superb book, by the way, and... Um, David Sheff said, you disagree with Neil Young's lyric in Russ Never Sleeps, it's better to burn out than to fade away. Lennon, I hate it. It's better to fade away like an old sol soldier than to burn out. If he was talking about burning out like Sid Vicious, forget it. I don't appreciate the worship of dead Sid Vicious or of dead James Dean or dead jo John Wayne. It's the same thing, making Sid Vicious a hero, Jim Morrison, it's garbage to me. I worship the people who survive. Gloria Swanson, Greater Garbo. They're saying John, Lane, John Wayne conquered cancer. He whipped it like a man. You know, I'm sorry that he died and all that. I'm sorry for his family, but he didn't whip cancer. It whipped him. I don't want Sean worshipping John Wayne or Johnny Rotten or Sid Vicious. What do they teach you? Nothing. Death. Sid Vicious died for what? So that we might rock? I mean, it's garbage, you know. If Neil Young admires that sentiment so much, why doesn't he do it? because he sure as hell faded away and came back many times like all of us. No thank you. I'll take the living and the healthy. I thought I'd just read that because it's interesting, obviously because John died within a few months of that interview. It's interesting because of the, you know, the reverence that has been given him as a, as a dead hero and he was the first to say when he was alive that he didn't think that was a very healthy thing. Although, of course, Lennon didn't burn out. His, his life was taken from him, so it's a bit different. But anyway, back to the album. Superb uh, acoustic opener, that, uh, that track, and it's a timeless uh, song. I love it to bits, and Thrasher is another brilliant track. Uh, again, more or less acoustic. Performed like a lot of this material in this album can be found on the, uh, the DVD of Russ Never Sleeps, which shows Neil doing a lot of these songs more or less solo. I don't think Thrasher is actually in the movie, but quite a few of the other ones are. And uh, just beautiful lines about, um, where's my favorite one? Down the windy halls of friendship to the rose clipped by the bullwhip, the motel of lost companions waits with heated pool and bar. Just wonderfully atmospheric lyrics and a uh, great tune, wonderfully sung and played by Neil. Uh, Ride My Llama is another beautiful acoustic song. And then Pocahontas um, and the previous one, Ride My Llama, had been featured on this album, which was actually not released. It's just been released just now. Hitch, what's was it called? Uh, Hitchhiker. So it says it's an unreleased album from 76. So this, al this album contains Pocahontas, an early different version, uh, Ride My Llama, and an early acoustic version of Powderfinger, which is also on this album. So that's interesting. But quite a few Neil Young albums of the 70s were a little bit uh, mixed in terms of having material from different eras. Like, uh, for example, I mean, On the Beach came out the Wrong Way Round from Tonight's the Night, which was recorded before. American Stars and Bars was a kind of hodgepodge of different eras. Um, and this album as well, if you look at the, the copyright on uh, Thrasher, it's 78. My My Hey Hey, 78. 
78, ride my llama 78, hook on to 77, sail away 77, powder finger 77, welfare mother 79, Satan delivery 77, and the end of the black version of hey hey is 79. So it's more or less within a three year period, but um, interesting to hear those early al early versions on here, but I think these these versions are the definitive ones. This is the back cover, by the way. And then uh, Pocahontas, yeah, great acoustic ballad. Um, uh, good, good lyrics. I think Roger Waters said he was a fan of this album. <coughs> I saw in some interview recently. And then Sail Away, sounds like it could have been easily been on the album Comes a Time, similar in uh, feel and just, just beautiful. I mean, Neil just does the laid back country ballad probably better than anyone. And Sail Away is a beautiful song. And I love the line, um, see the losers in the best bars, meet the winners in the dives, where the people are the real stars all the rest of their lives. Just beautifully down to earth. And I think one reviewer said uh, they learned more about American culture listening to this album than they, they had in their lifetime. So, and for me as a Brit, you know, I got to know, well, maybe a Canadian culture because Neil Young's obviously from Canada, but he lived quite a lot of his life, I think, in the States. Um, very interesting. The way Neil Young assumes various personas, although it's not autobiograph autobiographical many, much of the time, but uh, uh, really adventurous lyrics. I mean, Powder Finger is probably the best example and probably stands as one of Neil Young's best ever ballads. I mean, best ever rockers, sorry. <laughs> uh, this song you can never get tired of. Uh, beautiful riff in the middle from Crazy Horse and Neil. Um, beautiful words again, just from the opening line, look out mama, there's a white boat coming up the river with a big red beacon and a flag and a man on the rail. I think you better call John because it don't like they're here to deliver the mail. Just a wonderful rhyme there. <laughs> and then later, uh, daddy's gone and my brother's out hunting in the mountains. Big John's been drinking since the river took Emmy Lou. I just love the, just the, the imagery and you know, the, and he's only 22 and he's, he's been given this gun and he's been told to defend the, uh, the ranch or whatever. And uh, you know, daddy's gun in his hand made him feel reassuring, it felt reassuring. He told me red means sun and numbers add up to nothing. Ah, oh, yeah, powder finger, brilliant track. Uh, the rest of side two, not quite as good as that highlight, but then how could it be? Uh, Welfare Mothers is an amusing track about uh, divorced uh, women make better lovers. Welfare Mothers be make better lovers being the chorus shut sung by Crazy Horse, uh, the, the backing vocals. And then Satan Delivery, a good rocker, and Satan Delivery, another good uh, rocker. Very powerful guitar work from the band. And uh, one has to say Crazy Horse great form on this album as they were most of their career um, and then a much heavier version of Hey Hey My My uh, finishes the album with slightly distorted guitar um, uh, but it's still brilliant I'd probably prefer the acoustic version of Harmonis but this is this is a decent uh, coda to the album and rounds it off nicely so uh, it's a classic very happy to have it on vinyl at last and by the way, I will be doing the requests that you guys have made of me to review various albums like Exile and Main Street and uh, various others I've missed along the line, but they're coming soon, okay? Thanks for watching. See you next time.